Here we go. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Fly Time Tuesdays with Carlisle Fly and Fowl. Uh, today, we're going to be tying an elk hair caddis. Now, this is a staple dry fly pattern that every trout fisherman should have in their uh, fly box. It's a great prospecting pattern. Uh, I really, really love it when I'm blue lining for wild and native fish. Uh, they just are super opportunistic and they cannot pass up a big bushy dry fly like this. Uh, so it's a great pattern. Flo floats really well, a add some floating to it. And um, yeah, th we're gonna go ahead and jump on into it today. And I'll show you guys how I tie this. So we are using um, a size 12 hook today. Uh, and this is the TMCO 100 BL. Uh, it's a really good dry fly hook. I really like these hooks. We're gonna use some brown thread you can use tan or darker brown. This is kind of a light brown color. Um, we're going to start by getting our thread on the hook there. And we're gonna bring our thread all the way back to the bend of the hook, right where it starts to bend. And usually that's basically the point where you would have a barb. And we're gonna start tying in some material here. I've got some gold tinsel in size, uh, a small size. And we're going to tie that in here. Kind of just bring it back so we've got it really nice and secured, and you can trim that tag. And then next, we're going to add some ginger or brown hackle fibers. So you want to get a feather that's about the same size as your hook. So we'll strip off the uh, stringy fibers there at the bottom. Get this tied in. And then next, you can go ahead and trim off that tag in and we're going to add some dark brown dry fly dubbing. So we're going to build a slender dubbing noodle here for the body. We're just going to start wrapping this up. You want to form a pretty uniform shaped body. You don't want a super big taper on these. Then we're going to stop just short of the hook eye there. So that way we leave plenty of room to tie in our deer hair or our elk hair, sorry. And then we're going to add in a couple of half hitches here. bobbin in the bobbin cradle. This way we can use the rotary function of this vise to wrap the hackle fibers. So we're going to start. Wrap it up to the point of the dubbing and then we're going to tie it off. And kind of clean some of this up. And then same thing, another couple half hitches here to save our work. Bring our bobbin cradle back over. 
Now we're going to counter wrap our gold tinsel. And as we're coming through, you wanna try your best to avoid trapping so many hackle fibers, but you will inevitably. Um, so just kind of give it a back and forth motion up to the same point, and then we can tie it off. Cut that gold tinsel off. Here we're going to do a little bit of trimming on our hackle and build a ramp for our elk hair. This way the elk hair can kind of sit here really nicely along that, uh, those hackle fibers. It builds us a little bit of a ramp. And we're going to tie in our elk hair. And uh, you want to get you know, about a, maybe a little less than a pencil diameter of elk hair. Trim it off from the patch and kind of pull out some of these short fibers out of there. Get some of that fuzz out. Then we're going to stack this into our deer hair stacker. Put your tips in. And we're gonna give it several good hits on the table. And this is going to align our tips of the elk hair, make the tie-in look a lot neater. Now we're gonna measure to form about a hook shank and length of a wing. That looks pretty good. Transfer our measurement. And we're gonna do two loose wraps around this elk hair before we cinch it down. You don't wanna to put too much pressure on it on each turn because you can snap your thread just pinch it down a little bit at a time. Try to keep that elk hair on top of the body. And then bring the butt ends back. And I'll form a little bit of a thread dam there in front of them. Now at this point, we can grab our whip finish tool. And do a five or six turn whip finish here up front. It's important to leave those butts on it so that way you can grab a hold of them while you're whip finishing and they don't get in your way. Now at this point we can cut off the butts of the elk hair and we're going to do just a short little head on the front of this fly. And you can kind of come in and trim some of these other fibers. But, uh, yes, yeah, so that's pretty much it. We're going to add in a little bit of Sally Hansen Hard as Nails for kind of some head cement here. Put some on the thread wraps right there. Turn it over, and we're going to put some on the thread wraps on that belt care right there. This is going to add just some durability to the fly. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That is the elk hair caddis. Again, a staple dry fly pattern that every fly fisherman should have in their box. It does really, really well on a blue line streams, fishing for wild trout, um, and any other time that you've got some caddis coming off on the water. You can kind of match that. Uh, there's tan, brown, black caddis. Um, or, or your main ones that you would see. Um, but yeah, appreciate you guys watching. And uh, remember to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys want to see me tie next. And uh, we can see if we can make that happen. Appreciate you guys watching. We will see you on the next one.